Hello everyone, this is Marshall Giller, Head of Investment Research here at BD Swiss, bringing you our weekly Market Moves on MT4 webinar with my co-host Frank Walbum. Uh, before we get started, I just have to remind you as usual that trading has risks, that uh, prices can go down as well as up, and your capital is at risk, so please trade responsibly. Now, we've got an incredibly busy week coming up, uh, one of the most dramatic I've ever seen. First off, we have the U.S. election, which is really a lot more important than many of the elections that I've seen uh, in, my, in my day. Uh, we have three central bank meetings, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the U.S. Fed, and the Bank of England. And to top it all off, this is the first week of the month when we have the non-farm payrolls coming out for the U.S. So let's first start out talking about the election. We just had a webinar last week on the, uh, the uh, election. I'm not going to repeat what we said there. We, we've got that recorded if you want to listen to it. It's uh, quite detailed, especially it discusses how the president is elected, which is not by, just by popular vote, and opens up a lot of opportunities for cheating and for stealing the election, which I think might well happen. Uh, what the, the election uh, is tomorrow, the results will come out after the polls start to close uh, Tuesday night US time, which is around midnight GMT. There are a few states that you should watch because they're going to indicate really which way things will go. Florida is one of the most uh, important states. It's got 29 electoral votes. It's very important. Their results are due at midnight Wednesday. This state allows mailbox ballots to be counted before election day. There have been massive, unprecedented number of people voting uh, by mail. Uh, the problem is some states don't start counting these votes until election day which means it will take a long time for them to count their millions of votes. Not so in Florida, they're counted before the election day. So we should get a good idea of which way Florida has gone uh, Wednesday night or Wednesday morning. Now, the key thing here is Trump only has a very limited path to getting the necessary number of electoral votes. It will be difficult for him to win without Florida. If he wins Florida, it doesn't mean he's won the election, but if he's lost Florida, it probably means he's lost. So that will be really what people are watching the most. Ohio also counts their mail-in ballots ahead of time. That's a, a state that's in, uh, in competition. Uh, that will be around 2330 GMT, so we'll get a good idea there too. And Texas also. Texas has almost no mail-in voting. Uh, you have to vote in person, so their results should be known pretty well. If Trump loses Texas, which isn't likely actually, uh, it's considered a toss-up, but maybe leaning you know, Republican, he, he cannot win without Texas. There's just simply no way for him to get enough votes without winning Texas. So that will be a, another uh, do or die for him. North Carolina is important, uh, and Colorado. Colorado uh, isn't necessarily important for either one, but it's just, it's not a decisive state, but it's a good indicator if either side is going to get a big lead. And Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin are also states that are in play. People will be watching to see how those go. See, the point is, a lot of states are definitely going to be Republican. A lot of states are definitely going to be Democrat. What people are watching is those states that might go either way, and those are the ones that are going to tip the election. Remember, the U.S. election is not done by popular vote. It's done by states. Uh, so that's why we have to watch individual states. Uh, there's also the Senate vote coming up. Uh, that's probably, I think, more important than the, than, the, uh, Democrat, than the presidential vote, although it doesn't get as much publicity. That's because if the you have a divided Congress like you have now, if you have the House of Representatives controlled by the Democrats, Republicans controlling the Senate, they can't pass any laws. Laws have to be passed by both houses and the Senate can just say no to anything. Uh, and the Congress controls spending and that's why you can't get a new supplement, you can't get a fiscal stimulus package to it because the Senate just refuses. 
So without the Senate being in uh, democratic hands, you're not going to have any more fiscal spending. 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate are up for election. Currently, the Republicans have a small majority, 53 to 47. Two Republican seats are likely to turn Democrat. One Democrat seat is likely to be Republican, so that means it's likely to be 52 to 48 as a baseline. We then have to see if the Democrats can take away any of those Republican seats. Iowa, Maine, and North Carolina are considered the most likely. Um, if the Democrats get those, then they get control. Also, there are other Republican seats up for grabs too that uh, the Democrats could get. We'll have to, just have to see how many they can get. Uh, the party that wins the White House needs 50 seats in the Senate of a majority because the vice president uh, votes in case of a tie. If you don't have the White House, you need 51 seats. Uh, so you can see how finely balanced the uh, Senate is and how really one or two states can really change the entire uh, political scene in, and fiscal scene in the US. The things to look out for, the main concern now, the main worry a lot of people have, there was a report out yesterday that says Trump is going to try to call the election Tuesday night. He may be ahead on Tuesday night because more Republicans are voting in person while more Democrats are voting in mail. The people who vote in person, their votes will be counted immediately, but the mail votes, it takes a lot of time. You gotta open the envelopes, run the envelopes through the machines. Then uh, people can challenge the signatures, challenge the envelopes, challenge the data, blah, blah, blah. So they may have, he may have a lead in at the beginning then he tries to call the election and say that he won. As the mail votes are counted and more Democratic votes uh, come in and the vote starts to shift to Biden, Trump then starts calling fraud, cheat, rigged, et cetera, and precipitates a national crisis. This is quite possible. Uh, meanwhile, the Republicans might insist on verifying, on verifying each vote. They can ask each vote to have one by one to have the mail-in votes checked against the signature of the person who sent it in. This holds up the count. It would allow, if they don't have a complete count by December 14th, then the state legislators in many cases can just declare the vote for one candidate or another, and the Republicans may well just ignore the vote and declare it for Trump. And that would be a precipitate a constitutional crisis, unprecedented political chaos in the U.S. So the big thing is not just who wins, comes out ahead uh, on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, it's how big the lead is. If the Democrats have a big lead, Trump won't be able to do this. Like if, they, if he's lost, if Trump loses Texas by an astonishing amount or Florida, but if it's close, if it's, and you know, like with Gore versus uh, Bush, it was decided by 584 votes in Florida, I think then we've got a real problem on our hands. So there are three political scenarios we can think of. The benign one is that uh, the results might be delayed due to counting backlogs, but uh, a result is expected within days and everybody respects the results. I'm not waiting for this one. The painful one would be if the count is close, then we get start getting a dispute about ballot validity, leading to recounts at the state level, lots of delays, court cases, Supreme Court cases, then big trouble. And the crisis is if, even if it goes through the courts, one side might refuse to accept the results. Uh, Trump might refuse to accept a count that goes against him. The Democrats might refuse to accept it if the Republican state legislators just throw out the results and declare Trump the winner in their state. Uh, so we get legislative battles. You could have a state legislator presenting one side one and the governor, if you have a Democratic governor, is presenting another slate uh, and a big degree of government dysfunction, unparalleled political chaos in the US. So really we need to see a large one side or the other really dominating tomorrow to avoid all this. So under these can three, uh, prospects, there are three market scenarios. First off is a blue sweep. If Biden wins the presidency and the Democrats win the Senate, 
and we know about this quickly. Then we get fiscal stimulus arriving immediately, the economy is rescued, stocks are higher in a risk on mood, and the market believes the dollar would be lower because of a risk on mood. I think it might be higher because of the prospects of higher US growth and higher US interest rates. You could have Trump win. I mean, it's entirely possible, not outside the, the bounds of, the, of human thought. Or you could have a split Congress. Biden might win, but the, the Republicans take the, the Congress, take the, the Senate. Uh, if Trump wins, we still have government by tweet. We have international crises likely as he probably focus more on on international matters in his second term, since that's where the president has total control. Uh, the current gridlock would continue in Congress, no spending possible or even worse. Uh, the f as a result, with the economy tanking, the Fed would have to step up its quantitative easing to make up for the lack of fiscal stimulus. We'd have risk off, stocks lower, and probably the dollar much, much lower under this scenario as well thanks to increase a looser monetary policy. Then there's the uh, worst uh, scenario of a disputed election, high degree of uncertainty, possibility even of violence. We've already seen some violence in the last uh, couple of days. We've seen uh, yeah, trucks trying to run, Trump trucks trying to run Biden buses off the road. It's really unbelievable. Uh, an unprecedented constitutional crisis could ensue because really there's no way of resolving some of these issues. There's no laws that say what to do. Uh, we've never been in this situation. Uh, so this would be massive risk off and the dollar lower on the first real political instability we've seen in the US in a hundred years. Well, Aside from that, what have we got going on? We've got three central bank meetings, which I'll go through briefly. Tuesday morning uh, in Australia, we've got a Reserve Bank of Australia meeting. Uh, the Reserve Bank of RBA governor has hinted pretty strongly that there's going to be some further loosening measures. Uh, what people think expecting are a cut in the cash rate and the three-year government bond target currently 25 basis points may be down to 10 basis points. They could introduce a yield target for the five-year government bond as well. Uh, that would go in along with their longer uh, forward guidance. They're expecting to keep rates low for a long period of time. They might want to increase the, the, the period where they have a yield target to go along with that. And they could introduce large-scale asset purchase program in the longer end of the curve past five years maturity to go along with the yield target. The market implications for this, I think, are a weaker Australian dollar. Not to mention, we're also seeing lower oil prices as Libya boosts its uh, output as uh, Europe goes into lockdown, reducing global demand. That's also hitting the Australian dollar right now. The FOMC meeting on Wednesday, nothing's likely at all. The main desire, it seems, of all the FOMC member, the committee members is to see more fiscal stimulus. So they'll really want to wait to see the results of the election before deciding what to do. They could downgrade their view on the economy thanks to the pandemic, but their view is already pretty pessimistic. And people will just be waiting for the Powell press conference after the announce, initial announcement. Uh, that could give us some idea of the committee's thinking on what next steps they might take in December, probably at the December meeting once they know the results of the uh, election, uh, whether they're going to concentrate their quantitative easing bond purchases in the long end of the yield curve or even do something more serious like implement yield curve control like Australia and set a target for the long-term bond yield. And we have a Bank of England meeting on Thursday. Uh, they are likely to take further steps. The point is they were expecting a V-shaped recovery and it just hasn't come about. Growth has been disappointing compared to what they predicted in, us, in their monetary policy review in August. Meanwhile, the virus is exploding in Britain. Uh, they, the government just implemented new lockdown measures. That, those will dampen growth further. And inflation is far below target and probably going to fall further thanks to the lockdown measures, which will dampen growth further. 
Now, this meeting will come out with a new monetary policy review, which will come out with new forecasts. Um, central banks like to use these new forecasts as an excuse to change policy or as a trigger. We're, we're seeing that with the European Central Bank uh, at their December meeting, and we might see that here as well with the Bank of England. So what are they likely to do? They're likely to increase the ceiling on their asset purchase facility. Uh, right now it's set at, I think, 745 billion pounds, but at the current rate of purchases, uh, there will be no more room for them to do this for the quantitative easing by January. So they'll have to raise the ceiling there. Uh, the market's also waiting for them to implement negative rates. Uh, the market forecast is for them to have negative rates by about by early next year. But any announcement on that will have to wait. I think November 11th, if I believe it is, there's going to be a report coming back from the banks on how soon they'll be capable of implementing negative rates. Obviously, the banks of England can't uh, institute negative rates before the banking system can deal with them. You know, things like they have to reprogram their, their software. They have to be able to impl imp input negative figures into their software that just wasn't built to deal with negative rates. So this is likely to be negative for the pound because it's further easing, but I'm not sure people are so concerned about that right now. Brexit and also the lockdown are probably more important. You know, we, we've got a week or two before they have to come up with some Brexit agreement. It looks like they're reaching an agreement on fishing or some way to finesse the fishing uh, problem, that's probably more important than uh, any monetary policy move at this point. And with that, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Frank to tell you how he's planning on trading these exciting events. Exactly. All right, uh, Marshall. So uh, interesting news events uh, coming up as well. Uh, we are starting with, um, obviously, uh, interest rate decision kind of to focus on Australia as well. Hasn't been as of recently one of the big news events, but still, of course, um, alongside the election, alongside Brexit and obviously the uh, freshly imposed lockdown so within Europe mostly. Uh, we'll see that the markets, and that's why I deviate my trading strategy a bit for this week, we can see that markets might jump around uh, um, a day in, day out, or actually within uh, hours as well, from one uh, area to the other. So uh, somehow uh, somehow interesting um, interesting stuff as well, which is why I say if the dollar today, and we can see that right now here against uh, uh, most major pairs, at least uh, uh, so far, we can see that the euro dollar is trending to the downside. We can see that this, uh, this support area, which we've, uh, which we've found as valid as of recently, uh, might kind of really lead towards a bit of a, a falling price momentum here as well for now. But uh, these market moves could turn around erratically actually day in day out just because if we get news events from one side we might get contradicting news events from the other side in general though rule of thumb as well uh, uh, the dollar smile is just simply what we should keep in mind as well here and uh, we have critical uh, important news uh, coming up and that's why the markets might uh, as said jump around a bit and causing in general a rather stronger us dollar looking at the recent trends exactly what's uh, also what we could see here as well I wouldn't say that uh, the history right now uh, is what we should take into consideration to uh, expect what the market moves might be. Uh, meaning in this case that after this uh, big fall here, certain weeks or some weeks ago, we had a big rise thereafter. I might not say that this is uh, exactly what could follow, but looking at it from the monthly chart, this could be something where we would see as well. First of all, either the market looks utterly bearish, we might see a bit of a US dollar strength here to move forward as well. We can see as well globally that the demand in US dollars, not only in a way, of course, due to a, a safe haven uh, momentum might continue, but of course, simply as well, just because uh, the demand is uh, being shown here from the chart that's uh, uh, here uh, moving forward. So a fresh month, as we said as well, two things. Either we would see a bit of a rebound, that could happen as well, of course, as well. That would be the exact opposite to what I've said right now, right? So similar to last month, market moved higher uh, at the beginning stages here, which we could see as well, looking at it uh, uh, two weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago, the market really tries to break uh, beyond the 118 area. Thereafter, on the monthly chart, though, the market really returned and now offering us this uh, bearish momentum here, which is what we could uh, see lasting as well for now. So if we would see a rebound, I might say that uh, the market could move towards the 170. 17, 117, 30 area here before it's subsequently falling. Of course, if these uh, rather risk-off moves would 
uh, would continue right now, then we might see that uh, the US dollar strength could resurface. It's had dollar smile, which means uh, if the economic uh, momentum of the, the markets in general are in a very good shape, the US tends to stay stronger if the markets are in rather a bad shape, which is what I would rather see, especially during these uncertain times. You might see that, uh, that we see uh, um, a fall here towards the 115 and even subsequently on a 14, 113 area. So I'm staying with my short approach here and I'm staying uh, with my short momentum trade here as well. Looking for entry as well on the euro dollar, rather bearish. That's my medium or longer term approach. And then I'm trying to find the uh, entry momentum here on the short side of things here. Let me focus on this before I move to the Australian dollar. We can see as well, and that would be something to trade here right now. If this initial support trend here would kind of really be broken as well. We could also engage in some sort of a short market has fallen side quite a quite a bit of uh, as of recently. Uh, my trade still stays in, but it's just a rather small position size here as well. But uh, if we're looking at it as well here around the corner, we're having the next sort of support area, which would come in at 116, 116, 15 basically, which is uh, not far away. Though if we are looking at it from the ATR perspective here, pretty technical stuff right now, uh, the maximum high expected high for the day, the maximum expected low for the day, we might still see that even the 116 area could be threatened and we might drop drop uh, below that one. So that's my short-term approach though. Uh, on a Monday, expectedly, the market momentum for the week uh, might not be established here right now. And hence, I would say, but wait a little bit and see how the market really uh, turns. Uh, so far, we've started on a bit of a bearish note and uh, that's what we exactly could see throughout the uh, currency pairs. Euro dollar, Weakening the pound is on the weaker note, and the Australian dollar as well started weaker. Let me move the chart back to its original state here. Uh, we can see as well that the market is starting to fall below this uh, support trend line. Yeah, so we had this zone which uh, beforehand was pretty much resistance, and the market, as we say, has a memory resistance here, support there for the second, for the third time here on this recent uh, history uh, charting pattern here as well, which might confirm that the next uh, the next moves might uh, might just uh, follow up somehow soon as well. So um, those are the next uh, levels I would look out, watch out for as well. And we have quite a bit of downside momentum as well in play if the market would give us, would offer us some sort of a, a bearish momentum here somehow further, then uh, we might see a set, we might see that this uh, trend could continue as well. And uh, that brings me now to the stock market as well. As of recently, we've seen in that as well, the Australian dollar pretty much following closely the stock markets. The big rebound in recent months in the Aussie was confirmed or was on the other hand confirming as well the positive bias on the stock markets. The same could be observed here, S&P 500 trending higher and now in this sideways slide slash a bearish pattern. The same is actually what we can see in the Australian dollar. Same story exactly here to be observed and hence I would say as well and I would rather stay with my uh, cautious approach in stock markets and hence, hence I would say as well the Australian dollar could be an interesting trade and interesting uh, currency here for now moving forward. Though and that's what we have to say as well the uh, hourly chart confirms a bit of a slight support right now here so if the market really starts uh, regaining momentum to the upside that's on the hourly chart we can see so far only when the market starts giving us a bit of a falling momentum again here and that would be uh, kind of say at the break of the exactly uh, 70 area 0 0.700 which is uh, which is uh, where the market kind of uh, gives us a falling momentum and in this case uh, here we could see so if the market starts through and starts uh, following through with bearish momentum uh, we'll see we'll see that uh, we'll see that uh, the markets uh, turn to the downside and uh, in this case as well sometimes it's better maybe to kind of uh, wait a bit and not say look you know of course if right now you would enter into a sell position you would enter at a better price but that might not be the case that the market is following through with bearish momentum only when the market starts falling. You enter at a slight worse price, but only then you might understand, you might see that the market really kind of uh, it gives you this uh, negative momentum, kind of confirming here this with this area here. You would have said, look, the supportive trend really is, is breaking through here and you want to get go, go short. You might have get stopped out here at this uh, 
ceiling area in the end. Subsequently, the market then only thereafter fell lower. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here right now. I see that the bearish momentum is still uh, set to continue, but of course, uh, waiting for some time here right now uh, might be the better option here as well to kind of get the confirmation that the market really falls uh, further. So, all right, that's it. Australian dollar uh, kind of still on the weaker note here. So I don't have any big issue with this one here as well, but uh, that said, uh, we might see as well that the daily chart has already seen the lows for the day. The market might turn again back here uh, to the upside. And that's exactly what I would say as well. Potentially that Monday we get a bit of a, a bearish momentum for the Australia, for the US dollar. So meaning that this market tends to move a bit higher here. And then in the next couple of subsequent days as well, but maybe, maybe as well, some further risk off momentum come through means uh, as well, uncertain election outcome. Anyways, I don't think that we will get uh, the results straight on Tuesday. Of course, Trump, whatever it is, uh, is likely going to, uh, to, uh, to push through and push out his victory on Twitter and, and such, but uh, the likelihood as well that Biden could really uh, give us, uh, give us some, uh, some a Breakthrough momentum as well here initially is uh, is um, what we might expect and what of course could uh, cause uh, cause some social some social unrest as well. So we'll hope that uh, things calm so far and uh, that they, that they continue to stay calm as well in the US. But uh, I think the likelihood with the Biden victory rather is offering us more US dollar momentum in this case, uh, just due to the uh, uncertainty in social unrest. That we might see following through. Um, and that said, we can see also a bit of a risk on momentum move here in the dollar Japanese yen. That's uh, interesting because the market has fallen as of recently. We've had this uh, debated uh, uh, supportive trend here, support area tested once, twice for the third time. Right now, the market is. Uh, following through with a bit of a, a bullish momentum. Some I missed this uh, when I did my preparation earlier here this morning, a pretty clear uh, bullish momentum actually as we speak, right? So long weeks to the downside, the market following uh, with some higher momentum here. We have the stock markets not rallying, but uh, showing some sort of demand. US dollar in this case, not really the big, uh, the big, uh, uh, the big, uh, the big driver for this currency pair. It's more like the weakening Japanese yen risk on the markets move higher. Precious metals, well, doesn't show us any, don't, don't, uh, don't show us anything here in this regard, but the Japanese yen weakness is what we could see uh, following through. And my next, uh, my next uh, trade opportunity, uh, my next trading opportunity would either be to sell uh, the resistance area. If we get any sort of bearish candle, something like this potentially where the market rides higher, subsequently falls again, that's where we could sell. If this would, uh, would, uh, would be printed, this kind of candlestick would be printed at around the 105.15, 105.20 area. So that's what I would uh, watch out for. Uh, else, of course, as well, you still could. That's going to be a very bad rewards to risk ratio uh, uh, momentum here right now. But um, you could still also enter the market at a uh, with a live order here. And what we see is so far that the market, of course, could follow through with the bullish momentum here initially. So something we've seen here as well, right? So that the market uh, really triggers uh, uh, triggers the upside momentum here uh, for now. The problem is, of course, only that uh, if we would need, and that's exactly what it is, we would need to place the stop loss right at this bottom area, meaning if we enter right now, we have about uh, 40 something pips of a uh, stop loss and we have only say 30 pips of take profit. But the likelihood is said that the market follows through with some bullish momentum here especially here a full day is to my, in my opinion, uh, pretty much uh, uh, there. That said, uh, stock markets, as said, they are showing some uh, bullish momentum here. I don't say a lot, uh, uh, pretty much uh, right now that this is a changing trend to the outside, but what we could see as well is that at least the recent fall from last week uh, has come and has come to an end here right now, and that we would see at least uh, towards the, um, some price momentum towards the 3,320 area, somehow a bit higher here. Similarly in the uh, S&P 500, that's also what we see in the Dow Jones as well. So uh, uh, recent uh, recent uh, bullish moves could last towards the 26,900, 27,100 uh, market momentum. Subsequently or beforehand here, we might see that the market stops at the 26,800 area. As we can see, and that's pretty, pretty much uh, uh, just rather what I would expect here as well. After such a sudden fall here, such a drop we've seen in the, the recent, say, a week and a half or two weeks, basically, here uh, in the in the stock markets, we might see a rebound following through. Exactly, also what we've had uh, in the past, uh, in the past uh, election years, uh, the past uh, I don't know, some some uh, somewhat election years from the 1970s, the 90, 90 uh, something, 92 percent of uh, election weeks have shown a rather slight increase in uh, bullishness in stock markets, and that uh, could 
be a bit of a sign as well. Of course, we have uh, unprecedented times here right now with the COVID-19, with the, maybe also Brexit looming, um, uh, kind of uncertainty in the in the global markets and uh, economy uh, as well for now. But of course, the election uh, election week is set itself is usually following with some bullish momentum. That's what I might say after this big fall here could follow through first of all here. And I don't know if it's ending also this way, but we might see that the market moves up somewhat and uh, kind of in neutral territory here towards the end of the week before we head into next week. That's just uh, something what I would see, but indeed I would rather see that a bit of an uptick here is what we might see. And that's exactly also, we're looking at it from the uh, NASDAQ 100 perspective here that we might see some sort of uh, a bullish momentum to return right now. Now, contradictory to that is a bit, uh, or contradicting a bit, is the precious metals market. We can see gold moving higher. That would be potentially something which I would say uh, a bit of a return to a bullish, a bullish trading environment here right now. Now, this could also be just a retracement to the upside. I might say as well, a bit of a safe haven play. Uh, uh, this could be also, yet uh, we can see that the US dollar, well, somehow showing strength, depending on what we are looking at it uh, uh, against, but um, we can still, as I said, say that the US dollar is rather showing some sort of a momentum here and uh, that this momentum is not leading towards the gold prices uh, uh, to weaken further. Remember as well of course a stronger US dollar in general makes it makes gold more uh, more uh, makes gold cheaper comparing it to the to the US dollar. In this case it's not the case and I would say as well that uh, market participants alike might kind of also be alert as well and say look we might uh, we might kind of uh, hatch their portfolios in a way or might uh, run a bit towards a safe haven status as well. And uh, this trend of course could change momentum the big uptrend here of course uh, would be uh, would be enabled again at, at these high points here when they've been would they be crossed so 1900 above the 1900 area and uh, gold in us dollar we might see that the market turns uh, towards bullish momentum the same of course uh, applies also here for this trend line we could even extend this also to the upside here to uh, which which would confirm that these uh, these uh, candlestick patterns here and the resistance areas here might be uh, might be broken to the upside. So uh, it might be it might have to do with the US dollar itself, but also of course as well, uh, especially in silver economic activity with balance sheet increase uh, from the Federal Reserve uh, among other things. There's quite a few things, uh, quite a few topics, uh, important topics which uh, influence the precious metals market. Um, I might say as well right now it's uh, first of all the US dollar and the demand in US dollar, and of course as well the uh, interest rate decision and, uh, and what's happening in the US. And uh, that said, we have have the interest rate decision on the Wednesday from the Federal Reserve, so that's going to impact the markets as well. And uh, that could, of course, really kind of uh, give us some further momentum, offer us some further momentum in the where do I have it? Thursday? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Interesting. It's in, sorry, on Thursday, of course, not on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, Thursday. Um, uh, uh, there's the interest rate decision in the US as well, and that uh, might move um, that might move markets as well. It's going to be a late evening again for me. Time adjustment, of course, also hits me here, but uh, in any case, uh, I'm up uh, till quite late here. But uh, we'll see we'll see how this goes. So I find it interesting times as well, especially when we are nearing this trend line. We might see that there is some sort of entry momentum uh, going, moving forward. Either we find a breakout to the upside, that would be the longer term bullish momentum, which could uh, could uh, re so resume as well here, or could be resumed as well. Or we might see that the recent trend line in this case ends again here as a bearish, uh, a bearish charting pattern and also offering us uh, more downside momentum. Uh, that's uh, what could be the opposite side. Looking at it from the uh, monthly chart as well, we might find the agreement here as well. Let me uh, open a new chart as well for you guys here. So we had the bullish move, bearish momentum last month. Then we had a slight retreat, a uh, re re retracement to the upside, ending in again a bearish, a rather candlestick here. So this could be it. We could see that, uh, say, the first week so far, the market moves a bit higher. And then subsequently again, let's say week uh, two, three, and four in November, towards the end of the year, the market again falls with some bearish momentum here. So I wouldn't wonder either way. I'm still long term definitely staying on the bullish side here uh, for the uh, for the silver and the precious metals market in general. But uh, a short term I wouldn't mind as well that the market moves lower of course important to know here as well uh, pretty much is that uh, the 
volatility is extremely high so really if you are if you are trading and if you're following our trading ideas here as well just trade it with caution because the markets really could erratically kind of start moving big time as we've seen it just uh, three four months ago and uh, i might see that this uh, vol the volatility here is uh, kind of on a increased um, on increased level as well and likely to stay that high. Last but not least, the uh, oil markets, of course, in relation uh, at the moment to the uh, limited, pretty much limited demand due to COVID and to the uh, newly imposed uh, lockdowns, which also like, uh, likely might have an uh, uh, impact on the oil markets as well. We have the uh, the uh, the increase in output as well. I think Libya is opening up uh, some of their oil fields as well. Um, and nevertheless, I would say as well, the markets are pretty much in negative momentum mode here. We can see that the markets, and I've stayed, that's what that was the um, the short trade actually was kind of the the play around trade, which I've opened, not really sure when it was, quite some time ago. The market, uh, the trade still stays on. We're now back into profit here as well, as I expected the market to be to resume this uh, negative trend here as well. Again, also small position size that enables me to keep positions on and running without uh, uh, burning my portfolio or kind of uh, destroying my account here. Just uh, important to make uh, the difference and uh, the difference in analysis as well. It's always fun to have some short-term trading and have big winners, but you have to be careful as well. Uh, with your risk analysis as well the lesser you trade uh, the i mean the lesser you kind of uh, or the smaller you have your position sizes the more trades you can leave on at the same time that's one thing plus also the more capital you have left in case you have a few losing positions which uh, which uh, especially it like, tends to have uh, as you start a learning kind of uh, to uh, approach the world of trading here so my approach in this case uh, uh, remains the same that's why i said i'm starting off with a bit of a warning signs here as well we have a lot of news events this week kicking in they mostly kick in not at the same time but during the week like day in day out we have uh, important stuff and uh, of course as well one is the oil market which is trading lower as well we'll have to see how the market goes here i believe again as said i cannot move this here I believe as well that we would stay within the short trend here. I might still say that also the market momentum here could fall through further as well. We have clearly, uh, clearly an interesting previous support zone there, resistance zone here. So that uh, might offer us, should the market rise, uh, rise here towards the 36.30 area, some negative momentum. And uh, of course, that said, oil markets turning slightly weaker. We can have a look as well on the dollar, Canadian dollar a pair here, which is trading sideways. Canadian dollar has been weakening a fair bit, right? So following with this uh, stronger US dollar on one hand, a weaker Canadian dollar on the other hand as well if we're looking at it from the euro canadian dollar though and that's something interesting as well the euro is weakening somewhat but the canadian dollar is uh, fighting back a bit so that could be one of the arguments as well that we might see A bit of a stronger Canadian dollar and then subsequently a stronger Canadian dollar here. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not confirmed here against the US dollar Canadian. We might see that the market dollar cut falls, euro cut falls, stronger Canadian dollar would also mean that the oil market turns to the upside and if you would believe that we've seen already so far for the week that we've seen the lows for the week here, we might say that the market really returns uh, with some bullish momentum here as well. So I'm staying alert with this position. If the market really retraces to the upside, I might close this position out here. On the other hand, of course, we can see for our bullish candle here, on the other hand, if the market starts falling again here, of course, I would see as well that the Canadian dollar in general would also fall uh, as well. All right, to sum it up now, interesting and important news events every day so keep an eye on the uh, economic calendar in general i would say we would stay with the rule of thumb of a stronger us dollar during these uh, unprecedented times and uh, especially also of course uh, covid 19 election government responses uh, uh, globally say at least in the western world regarding covid 19 um, a virus spread so that makes it for me rather appealing that the us dollar stays stronger we have the pound which is weakened as well a, a fair bit so far a uh, brexit uncertainty is just one of the key factors we can see here we have also the australian dollar short position kind of equals to falling stock markets right so stock markets lower aussie lower as well staying in this position here right now um, the dollar japanese yen could strengthen as well uh, the idea of course uh, to uh, to reach the 105 20 area is what i would expect for the day here so far and then as said vice versa precious metals silver long term up short term we might see a bit of weakening momentum here and then of course the importance here with oil and uh, lockdowns kind of um, as the idea in uh, yeah 
would be that the oil market might turn weaker medium term, but short term we might see an increase in value so far. All right, guys, uh, audio is not good, says uh, Mario. Audio is breaking up. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, should have switched to my alternative uh, connection. I think I'm having, I keep having issues with the with the with the Wi-Fi connection here. Um, yeah, my bad. Uh, I'll keep this in mind, guys. Uh, sorry about this one. I should have looked on the uh, comment section here a bit earlier on guys anyways happy trading if anything else uh, let me know what's going on let me know what you feel and uh, until then uh, let's keep focusing on the uh what's uh, coming up uh, this week. All right, Gasparo, cheers, mate. Everyone, a happy trading for the week uh, and presidential election in the US. Everyone, cheers, guys. Uh, talk to you later. Good trading. All right, uh, you didn't get the PDF file. Okay, I'll check up with, uh, I'll chat with uh, Mark. Yeah, uh, the PDF uh, document, uh, Gaspar, uh, Marshall, regarding um, regarding our webinar from last week. Uh, who's going to send this uh, this out? Uh, well, I sent it to the marketing people. Uh, I'll have to check with them to see if they sent it out. Okay. Okay, perfect. We'll do this. Or maybe we can also maybe we can just also share it on our Telegram group for the viewers. But uh, yeah, let we can share with uh, we'll share with uh, we'll follow up on this, uh, Gasper, and uh, we'll get back to you as well, and of course to the remaining group as well. Great, guys. Uh, ah, okay, Alex. Uh, cool. We get the information right now as well, straight in the webinar here. Um, that uh, you guys should check with your account manager. That actually makes sense. So keep in touch with your account manager and. Uh, check out uh, and uh, please request for the uh, document uh, yourself i think that's the best way moving forward um, just to clarify as well uh, uh, potentially i think that makes sense the most yeah alex great thanks for your idea thanks for the input so far so check with your account manager and uh, i think until then we'll keep you posted uh, uh, during the day see of course with plenty of uh, webinars to come here especially this week kind of a webinar marathon week and i'm looking forward to, uh, to uh, celebrate the exciting events here together guys everyone cheers see you later